Harlan Ellison's Eidolons. I could probably talk for 10 or 20 minutes about what these are, where they come from, what they mean to me, but I'll, I'll let you uh, sort of form your own opinions. This is only a small fraction of the uh, of the of the lessons that, that that Harlan provides in this in this uh, haunting little short story, so I won't say anything more. Do they chill the breezes that whisper of yesterday, the winds that come from a hidden valley near the top of the world? Do they bite the shadowy thoughts? that lie at the bottom of your heart during daylight hours, that swirl up like wood smoke in the night? Can you hear the memories of those who have gone before, calling to you when the weariness takes you close on midnight? They are the winds, the thoughts, the voices of memory that prevail in the hour that lies between awareness and reverie. And on the other side of the world, hearing the same song, is your one true love Understanding no better than you that those who cared and went away are trying to bring you together? Can you breach the world that keeps you apart? This is an emergency bulletin. We've made a few necessary alterations in the status quo. For the next few weeks, there will be no madness, no imbecile beliefs, no paralogical, prelogical, or paleological thinking, no random cruelty. For the next few weeks, all the impaired mentalities will be frozen in stasis. No attempts to get you to believe that vast and cool intelligences come from space regularly in circular vehicles. No runaway tales of yetis, sasquatches, hairy shamblers of a lost species. No warnings that the cards, the stones, the running water, or the stars are against your best efforts. This is the time known in Indonesia as Jam Karet, the hour that stretches. For the next few weeks, you can breathe freely and operate off these words by one who learned too late, by one who has gone away, who was called Camus. It is not man who must be protected, but the possibilities within him. You have a few weeks without hindrance. Move quickly. The casement window blows open. The nightmare has eluded the guards. It's over the spiked wall and it's in here with you. The lights go out. The temperature drops sharply. The bones in your body sigh. You're all alone with it. Circling with your back to the wall. Hey, don't be a nasty little coward. Face it and disembowel it. You've got time. You've always had time. But the fear slowed you and you were overcome. But this is the hour that stretches and you've got a chance. After all, it's only your conscience come to kill you. Stop shivering, put up your dukes. You might beat it this time, now that you know you have some breathing space. For in this special hour, anything that has ever happened will happen again. Except, this time, it's your turn to risk it all. Did you have one of those days today, like a nail in the foot? Did the pterodactyl corpse dropped by the ghost of your mother from the spectral Hindenburgs forever circling the earth come smashing through the lid of your glass coffin? Did the New York strip steak you attacked at dinner suddenly show a mouth filled with needle-sharp teeth? And did it snap off the end of your fork, the last solid gold fork, from the set Anastasia pressed into your hands as they took her away to be shot? Is the slab under your apartment building moaning that it cannot stand the weight on its back a moment longer? And is the building stretching and creaking? Did a good friend betray you today? Or did that good friend merely keep silent and fail to come to your aid? Are you holding the razor at your throat this very instant? Take heart. Comfort is at hand. This is the hour that stretches. Jam Karet. We are the cavalry. We're here. Put away the pills. We'll get you through this bloody night. Next time, it'll be your turn to help us. You woke in the night, last night, and the fiery bony hand was inscribing mystic passes in the darkness of your bedroom. It carved out words in the air, flaming words, messages that required answers. One picture is worth a thousand words, the hand wrote. Not in this life, you said to the darkened fire. Give me one picture that shows you how I felt when they gassed my dog. 
I'll take less than a thousand words and make you weep for the last Neanderthal, crouched at the cliff's edge at the moment he realized his kind were gone. Show me your one picture. Commend to me the one picture that captures what it was like for me in the moment she said it was all over between us. Not in this life, bone hand. So here we are, once again in the dark, with nothing between us in this hour that stretches but the words. Sweet words and harsh words and words that tumble over themselves to get born. We leave the pictures for the canvas of your mind. Seems only fair.